Hey folks, I'm making a video for you today going over wireless functionality using the MWave Chocolate Plus and the Veilton GP5. So obviously it's possible to send commands over with a physical connection if you're coming out of the host port of the Chocolate Plus over to the USB-C port on the GP5. But the GP5 also has Bluetooth built in. So using SysX codes instead of CC messages enable us to send MIDI information over to the GP5 wirelessly. So that's what this video is going to be about. We'll talk about the basics of the MVave Chocolate Plus and how to program and set a few things up using the Cube Suite app. So yeah, let's delve in. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is get a Bluetooth connection going between the iPad and the Chocolate Plus. So I'm gonna turn on the Chocolate Plus to the right, which is host mode. This light's gonna start flashing blue until it's made a connection. So I'll go to settings on the iPad and I'll turn Bluetooth on. And now that's made the connection with Foot Control Plus on the iPad. If it doesn't connect automatically, just go ahead and tap that and it should connect for you. But the main thing is that this light has gone solid blue. So the iPad and the Chocolate Plus are now connected to each other. What we then need to do is open up the Cube Suite app which is the app that runs alongside the Chocolate Plus. If it doesn't have the Foot Control Plus here, just tap Scan for Nearby Devices and it should come up for you. You're gonna tap this and it's now gonna make that connection between the app and the Chocolate Plus. So it can be a little bit overwhelming when you first delve into these things. It will probably load up with Program Change A and then these three zeros on the device. We're not gonna be going into all of these different options that you can do with the Chocolate Plus. The main one that we're gonna be focusing on here today is advanced custom mode, which is where we're gonna be able to program our SysX commands to send over to the GP5. But I will make a separate video going into as much detail as possible with the Chocolate Plus and the app. But today, let's just focus on how to send things wirelessly over to the GP5. So you're gonna select advanced custom mode. Down at the bottom here, you can see it says maximum group count, which is eight. If you wanted to change this so it didn't need to cycle through all eight pages on the Chocolate Plus, you could of course do that. So you can change that to say two banks. And then when I use foot switches C and D, which is technically foot switch F on the Chocolate Plus, it will move up to bank number two, but then it will just go back up to bank number one again. So that means it's reached the maximum count and it's just gonna go around those two different banks. Of course, you can set that to eight and then it will go all the way up to bank number eight before cycling around again. So that's entirely up to you how you want to do that. But the Chocolate Plus has foot switches A, B, C, and D. And in this particular mode, we're gonna use foot switches C and D to bank up and then A and B to bank down. So I'm just gonna leave that on eight banks for us today, but we're not gonna be programming all eight banks. Now current group will just display whichever bank you want to start programming. So you can see I've got bank number one here and group number one there. If I go to group number three, now I've got foot switches A, B, C, and D on bank number three on the Chocolate Plus. We might as well start at the very beginning with group number one and foot switch A. And this is where I can start to put information to send commands out to the GP5. So there's no physical connection between the iPad and the GP5. We're just powering the GP5 with the DC input here, and then the iPad's just charging like it normally would. So what I'll do first is I'll talk you through the different modes that you can choose from on the Chocolate Plus. And it basically just enables you to either toggle something on or off, select something, you've got options to press and release, and to long press and things like that. So the first one here is just a single press. It's worded a little bit strangely, but the main thing is that with this mode, when you press something down, that message will be sent out. The second one is switch between two banks. So that's effectively just like toggling something on or off. So let's say we want to turn on or off the distortion effect here. We will most likely select the single step mode, which will turn it on with one press and then off with a second press. The third option here is a press and release. So it will send one message when you push the foot switch down. And then when you release the foot switch, another message can be sent. The next mode here is long on. So that means a message can be sent when you hold the foot switch down. And then the last one here, you can send a message with a push and a hold. So I'm not gonna use all of them in this video, but we're gonna use the first one, the second one, and the last one. And I can demonstrate the differences between those. So single step, first of all, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap this plus icon here underneath. And at the moment, it's gonna be sending a program change message. Now the GP5 doesn't respond to any program changes at all. So we do need to change that to a different command. And you can see here, I've got the channel that I'm gonna send those commands on. Now the GP5 is currently locked to channel one. So we have to leave that on channel one at the moment. So I've got different types of commands that I can send. So I've got PC which are program changes, CC control changes, note on, note off, then note messages, and we don't need to talk about those at all in this video. And then finally, SysX, which are the system exclusive messages that we're gonna to program today and send wireless commands over to the GP5. Now, if you were gonna do this with a wired connection, you could of course just go to your CC messages here and you can set them up like you normally would. And obviously, if you are running out of the host output on the Chocolate Plus directly to the GP5, you wouldn't need to use those SysX commands. But we want to do this wirelessly, so in our case, we're gonna go over to SysX. Now, it can be a little bit overwhelming when you first delve into this. But what I've done is I've put together a chart for you to use so you can copy and paste the SysX codes 
over to the app. Now, I'm not going to be taking any credit for this. There are much smarter people than me that have worked these SysX codes out. So many thanks to those individuals that have provided me with the SysX commands. But what I have done is I have put together a PDF that you can use, and I'll leave this in the description below. So effectively, I've just put the SysX codes down the right hand column here, and you can see the first ones are the effect states. So we've got noise reduction on and off, pre effects on and off, etc., for all of those different effects blocks. And we're going to use those first of all. And then below that, I've got the SysX codes for all of the presets from 0 to 99. So let's say we're on preset number one and we want to turn on or off this distortion block that we can see on the GP5 screen. So all I'll do is I'll select that SysX string there and I'll copy that over to this area. Now you would think that that would work straight away, but because we want to toggle something on or off, we're just going to go back a step and we're going to change this now to single step switch between two banks, which is that toggling on or off state that we talked about before. And now we can see an A and a B bank. So the A bank is what you want the foot switch to do the first time you press it, and then the B bank the second time. Now I want to turn on or off the distortion block. So I'm gonna change this to sysx, and I'm gonna paste that first sysx string here. I'll hit save, I'll move across to B bank, and then I'm gonna add another sysx command here. I'll move back over to the PDF, and now I want the off command for the distortion block, which I'll copy and I'll paste that over to the app. So now I've got one command that's gonna be sent with the first press of the foot switch, and then a second command with the second press, and that's gonna correspond with the distortion block over here. So to make sure that foot switch A on group number one is going to send that information, we first need to disconnect from the iPad. So I'm gonna turn Bluetooth off. This light will continue to flash until it's made a connection with the GP5. I'm gonna hold down the parameter knob over here, and now these devices are communicating with each other. So the first thing that we've done is we've programmed a toggle to turn on or off a distortion block using a sysx command, and this is done wirelessly with the Chocolate Plus and the GP5. Let's make sure that's worked okay. You can see the distortion goes off and then back on again. So that's working nicely. I'm gonna disconnect Bluetooth from the GP5, and then we're gonna go and connect back with the app. So foot switch A is turning on or off the distortion block. And of course on bank A here, you could have four different effects blocks that you turn on or off. And again, you're doing this completely wirelessly as well. Now what we'll do is we'll move up to the next bank, so bank number two, and we can program these a little bit different. And let's say in this bank, we want to toggle between different presets. Now what I'll do is I'll go to foot switch A, and this time I'm going to leave it on single step because I want to select a preset. I don't want to toggle between two states in this case. Let's go for a preset at random. Let's choose preset number 33. So I'm going to go over to my handy PDF and I want to select preset number 33. I'm going to copy that sysx code there for preset number 33. Go back over to the Cube Suite app. I'm going to hit plus. Remember, I'm going to change this over to sysx and then paste that sysx code in here. Hit save. And now I know foot switch A on bank number two is programmed to send over a command to the GP5 to select preset number 33. So again, let's go and make sure that's working okay. I'm gonna turn off Bluetooth on the iPad and then we'll fire up Bluetooth on the GP5 so that both of these devices are connected again. Now remember bank A was turning on or off the distortion block and that's still working nicely. And now bank B, foot switch A, should select preset number 33. And there we go. And again, I can move back and I can turn on or off that distortion block. So let's disconnect, let's do one more. We'll reconnect back over to the app. And now let's say I want foot switch B on bank number two to do a couple of different things. Let's go to a different preset. So this time I want foot switch B to turn on the delay block with a single press, but also with a hold, I want it to select a different preset. So this way I can use a single foot switch to be programmed to send a couple of different commands. So a single press will turn on the delay effects and then a hold will select a specific preset. So to do this one, we're gonna go down to the bottom here where it says short tread and long tread. What that means, it will send a message with a single press and then a different message with a long press. So I'll select that one first of all. Again, we're gonna go and send a sysx command and we want that to correspond with the delay block this time. So I'll go back to my handy PDF. I want it to turn on the delay. So I'm gonna copy that one over here and then paste that and save it. So that's the short press programmed. And then for the long press, again, I'm gonna send a, a sysx command and let's just choose a different preset at random. Let's go for preset number 90. So I'm gonna copy preset number 90's sysx code and then paste that into the B bank. 
So again, a single press will turn on the delay and then a long press will change to preset number 90. Let's make sure that's worked okay. Let's disconnect via Bluetooth and then reconnect over on the GP5. And we've done this with foot switch B. So a single press will turn on the delay and then a hold changes to preset 90. So in a nutshell, that's how easy it is to program things wirelessly using those SysX codes. But again, you wouldn't need to use these if you had that physical connection in place. This is just to show you that you can do it wirelessly. But like I said before, I'm certainly not taking credit for obtaining these SysX codes. That's what other very intelligent people have managed to do. And thank you very much to those individuals that have managed to do that. But I just wanted to share this with you today. And this PDF that I've put together, you can just download that from the link below. But I hope this has been useful. If it has, do consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any future content. There's loads more things I've got in the pipeline to come as well. You can support the channel through the various links below. As always, everybody, I'll see you in the next one. Ta-ta.